Hi everyone, my name is Megan Brunson and I'm president of the American Association of Critical Care Nurses. And I wanted to call up Liz Bridges, who is the current president elect, who lives out in Seattle and do what we do best in nursing and find out what is going on in the other side, 3000 miles away um, in a city that is very impacted by this COVID crisis. Hi Liz, how are you? Good. We're doing good out here, Megan. Good. You know, it just made sense for me to ask you um, how things are going in Seattle and exactly what you think nurses need to do to prepare. My city hasn't actually quite, um, or I should say my hospital hasn't been quite impacted yet. So I wanted to make sure um, that I and my teammates were completely prepared. Right. I think probably the, the biggest lesson we're learning out here is, is that there are there are resources, there is guidance, there uh, are recommendations on, on how we should prepare for these patients, how we should be caring for these, these patients. And I think it's really critical that you identify in your communities, in your hospital, where those sources of, of really reliable information are and, and keep your focus on, on using those resources. Mm -hmm. the, other, the other thing I think in a hospital, it's really easy to hear, well, I heard, and so again, you need to know where are those sources, where can you channel those questions, because you need to ask the questions and you need to get answers, but to figure out where those, those sources are to get the right answers back, back to your questions. I think that's really right now, communication um, uh, is, is critical right now. Right. What do you think are some clinical presentations? Uh, what are these patients gonna look like? Uh, what kind of um, things are you seeing out there uh, with these patients and what their suffering looks like? Right. I think that, that you know, we have learned from our colleagues in China, uh, certainly more recently, and our, our colleagues in, in Italy have been uh, really incredible in sharing their experiences and their understanding of patients. We're seeing uh, you know, similar sorts of, of profiles out here uh, in Seattle and what I see in the literature, everybody's seeing the same thing right now. Traditionally, right now, it's, uh, it's still predominantly um, of the critically ill patients are tending to be the older individuals with, with comorbidities. Um, the presentation is that this is a single uh, system disease, predominantly an acute hypoxic respiratory failure on them. The secondary sequelae that we're seeing in the ICU patients is some sort of a cardiomyopathy. Um, so if you start thinking about what's the kind of care we would need to give to those patients, it's the care we give to patients with ARDS, with cardiac failure um, already, which is really important for us to remember because we know how to take care right, um, right. Of, the, of those patients. The other thing is eight out of 10 patients, people who are COVID positive, will not need to even come into the hospital. So there's only going to be about 20% of them who are coming into the hospital and at least two thirds of those patients are gonna be out on the acute care floors. And then there'll be that smaller group that are gonna come into the critical care. So in terms of planning for potential numbers, I think that's, that's important again. And knowing what that, what's going on in your community is, is real important. Right. You know, one thing that um, for myself, I always felt like going to find resources to care for these patients, AACN has such a wonderful stockpile and we certainly are going to be getting those out to our community. Yep. But also it's important for us to brush up on our own policies and procedures within our own hospital. Um, and I'm sure that you guys have done that too out in Seattle, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think every hospital has a disaster plan, but perhaps not for, for it. For this. I think what's even more important right now is do not recreate the wheel. Great. Use, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Use your evidence-based sources. If the CDC or your local public health is, is telling you about those things, but also, um, you know, in our facilities, we are sharing across our community the standards of care. Every one of our hospitals has agreed on those standards of care. Those, those resources are available. We're making them available online to people. So if you need them, Go to use those resources and then adapt them to to yourself locally, but do not recreate the wheel. Do not recreate evidence. We know how to take care of these patients. Um, you know, use the, use the expertise that we already have out there in the community. Right. 
you know, this is going to be a marathon, not a sprint, Liz. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have a stop date on this. And um, nurses are always been there on the front lines. Um, and right now, we all are expecting this surge in, in patients. Um, and, you know, I just want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, we're all thinking about the nurses in these kind of red zone areas, Seattle being one of them. Um, and we're going to use your guidance to, um, to prepare for the patients that are coming our way. So, um, thanks so much, Liz. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Megan.